And now on BBC One, it's time for Children's Hour. Sci-Fi Dan, Sci-Fi Dan, Sci-Fi Dan and his fanboy clan. What a bunch of misfits, scientists and nitwits. Sci-Fi Dan is a very silly man. Sci-Fi Dan, Sci-Fi Dan, Sci-Fi Dan and his fanboy clan. Welcome to Fanboy Questions number 14. Today we'll be looking at, or rather listening to, the incredible sounds of space rockets. Sorry, wrong footage. These majestic machines not only fly very fast, they also make noise like you've never heard before. These things are loud. Here's a decibel chart to show you some examples of how noisy things can be. As you can see, potential hearing damage or loss begins at around 80 to 90 decibels, and the real pain kicks in at around 125. There is a number of reasons that no one can be close to a rocket launch. Heat, explosion risk, gases, flying debris to name a few, but what most people don't realize is that the exclusion zone around a launch is also because the sound of these things taking off is literally deadly, if you are too close. When the massive Saturn V rocket launched, it gave out 220 decibels, which is loud enough to set grass on fire and melt concrete. It would also turn your internal organs into jelly and melt your bones. What a way to go. The exclusion zone is usually around three to four miles. If you've ever witnessed a launch at this distance, then you will know that even at four miles, it's bloody loud. Now let's see how close the astronauts are to the noise. 363 feet. What? Wait, that, that can't be right. Yep, it's right. These astronauts are sitting in an aluminium box less than 363 feet away from a noise that should kill them instantly. Let's take a look at how these brave men and women handled this life-threatening situation. Hmm, they don't seem too bothered. Looks like one guy's reading the instruction manual. Where's their ear protection? How can they talk to mission control over all that noise? Simple answer, they're not sitting on top of that rocket. They're in a studio. But I, I saw them into the capsule. I saw the technicians seal the hatch. Yes, you did. Let's see where they went. Once the crew are on board, if it looks as if they're in danger, they get out and head down this tube, specially insulated against fire, and zigzagging down not to some point out and away from the rocket, but to an escape room exactly where you'd think it shouldn't be. Three and a half minutes after they get the warning in the capsule, the crew could be down here in the blast escape room via that 200 foot escape tube, 40 feet below the base of the rocket. They find themselves in a totally rubber room, walls and floors, and they head for safety through a six inch steel door. Once they're behind that door, it doesn't matter what comes down this tube behind them. On this side of that door, the rarely seen blast escape room itself, it's totally isolated from everything around it by a series of 24 giant springs underneath the floor and shells all round it of steel, concrete and sand. There you have it folks. They don't go into space because they can't. Nobody rides in these things because they would die within seconds. Nobody died in these disasters. The only people that died in a space capsule was Gus Grissom and his crew. Gus had figured out the hoax and famously hung a lemon on the outside of the capsule. 
They tried to get rid of him by blowing the explosive bolts on the hatch while it was floating in the sea after touchdown. Luckily for Gus, he managed to escape before it sunk, but they finally got him by pumping pure oxygen into a training capsule and igniting it. Him and two others were burned alive. That shows you the lengths that they will go to protect their multi-billion dollar scam. Okay, fanboys, how are you going to wriggle out of this one?